Thank you, buddy. Um, this is the second time in a row that you participated in a reboot. Uh, first with Galactica, that you actually made Boomer hot for the first time ever. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe uh, not for some people. <laughs> uh, well, it right? depends. So, yeah. so, do you feel any additional pressure in, in, in making it right for fans of the original show? You know, I think if I was playing Katie Sackhoff's role of Starbuck in the original and there was a, a lot of animosity, maybe I'd have some similar feelings. But, um, like Boomer, Kono was also was, um, an important character in the original show, but not necessarily, like, the most, like, um, for, for, you know, for, what am I trying to say? Front, foremost? Front? Center? Yeah. Um, so... I think for that there's uh, less attention put onto the role. I think it's kind of an interesting tidbit. And yes, how did I do this again? You know, like doing remakes is not a guaranteed thing, as we know. We've seen many come and go. Um, but there, with the with the people attached to this project um, behind the screen and, and in front, there's, uh, there's a lot of talent and skill. And I think with their past projects, it, I mean, you can't foretell the future. But if you look at the things that they have worked on, you get a sense of their work ethic and their their process, or, or if not their process, at least like what what they have in mind. And, um, and I like what I saw before. I was did you blown away? So I wanted to be a part of it again. Good luck. Did you audition for the role, or did, did yeah. they just want you immediately? It would have been nice if they just wanted me immediately, but no. <laughs> no, it, it was like some I heard. I met with um, Meg Lieberman, who's like uh, studio head casting at CBS. But then the, she told me, but she came to Vancouver to see like all the talent up there just as a general and at that time I heard there was like, some excitement but then I didn't hear anything for months and I just thought it passed me by and um, then I got a call for a screen test offer which means it's, all, the word offer is in there but it's still you got to go through the process so you skip maybe like six steps of like a pre, pre-screen or like all the other like just the director just the producer that kind of stuff and you go straight to the end um, but then it's almost more daunting in a way because it's just you step in front of like 20 executives at like you know biggest network in uh, in America, and uh, you fall flat on your face there. And it's like that's not you know it's in one fell swoop it's done. <laughs> so. so what is your Comic Con experience been like so far? You got to check out anything yet, or will you get to? Well, I hope so. I like I like hitting the floor and, and getting a sense of the buzz. I think one of the most fun things about Comic Con is like looking at all the people. What are they wearing? Getting out on the floor, like the buzz of of like ground level, you know, and um, and it would be really fun to go to some of the other panels and stuff like that. But um, got here yesterday, took the red eye, and been in hotels ever since. So it's really different when you're going to Comic Con as like a participant to just to be like out there and buy stuff and watch things and you know look at the new trailers. And uh, a little bit different when you're shuttled in like via like the garbage trucks, like through the back lane and through the kitchen. Um, it's almost like you're in a James Bond movie, like expecting action to happen in the kitchen. But um, yeah, it's a little bit. And then we do like stuff like this, like the, the press tables. Um, so it's totally a different experience. So I hope to get out there eventually. You mentioned that you were talking about how, how the character of Kono has um, changed probably from the original series. Can you talk about who um, Kono is and um, why, you know, why fans will enjoy it? I think Kono is, a, is an interesting element now because you could have Y50 be a team of four men, 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 and that would also be great. But sometimes, like, it's always great to be ha- able to have more tools at your disposal. And if you do have a woman on the team, there's things that they may or may not be able to access because of just the sheer fact that she's a woman. You can disarm people, that kind of thing. So you find that with Kono, um, she's like a, a rookie cop that's going to join this new forming team. And uh, she's related to Chinho Kelly. And she gets to meet Dano and Garrett like right off the bat. And she participates in something that she probably wouldn't be able to do on her own because she would be just a newbie, like a rookie going into the academy, or out of the academy into the police force. But with that, she gets thrust into this world of crime, but really cutting edge, like at the forefront, and probably not following all the rules, but they get done what they need to get done, and um, it's kind of the nature of this new team. Yeah, what was the 
what's her, what's her, give you one quick follow up. Yeah, what is her role in the team and what's her personality? Um, I think you're going to see that she's a bit of, um, uh, she's pretty hands on, she's uh, a tomboy, she likes to roll the boys, um, but at the same time she's a woman, you know, so she's not like, that's totally lost on her, but uh, being a little bit younger than maybe some of the, her other counterparts, she's discovering who she is, that kind of thing, but I think for the most part you're going to see her involved in, in gunfights and um, and one-on-one uh, -on -one fights, that kind of thing, and hopefully a little bit of this technology as well in, in solving the crimes. Thank you guys very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.